When Les Ladke bought his home in Sydney's north two decades ago, he thought he'd found a little slice of paradise. We came to this place, we only saw half the house. And we both agreed that, yeah, this is perfect. We had planned to stay here forever, yes. The 65-year-old never thought he'd be working day and night to clear a debt of more than a million dollars. I blame myself for it happening. Money got tight when he and his wife Samar were hit by several major health problems. Samar developed Parkinson's. I had operations on my heart. I had two lots of stents, um, then I had the memory losses, and then the uh, arthritis, and then to top it all off, I had the um, compromised nerve in my back, and so I had to have a major back surgery. I believe we need to sell it ourselves. Unable to work and with Samar now needing regular medical care, the couple extended their home loan from $250,000 to over $600,000. Financial pressures got too great. Uh, we were working for the bank, not for ourselves. To clear that debt, Les took out a further loan, hoping that renovating their house would boost the sale price. But no sooner we borrowed the money, things started to go badly. Uh, Samar's Parkinson, and we got over that, and then my back operation. Do you regret taking that loan? Oh, very much so. It was probably the biggest mistake of my life. This is the notice to vacate. Once we failed to pay back on time, they increased the interest to 60%. Now, two decades on from the original $250,000 mortgage, Les has no choice but to sell his dream home to clear a million dollar debt. If we fail to get a contract of sale within three months, they've asked us to voluntarily hand over the house. Despite some of the lowest home loan rates in decades, more and more Australians are struggling to pay back their mortgage. The latest data shows the rate of mortgage arrears has been growing for the past five years. It's a worrying trend that points to bigger problems in the economy. Typically you'll find that arrears rates rise when economic conditions weaken. The fact that arrears rates are going up probably does speak to you know, a persistently low incomes growth environment. So, you know, overall incomes growth in the economy is running at about half of, of long run averages. Mortgage holders in general are now using a greater proportion of their income to pay back the mortgage. Economist Sally Ald predicts the rate of mortgage arrears, which is when borrowers fall behind on their repayments by more than a month, is only going to get worse. You know, it's not our view that over the next sort of six to 12 months, the labour market's going to get a whole lot better. Um, it's not really our view that incomes growth is going to pick up a whole lot. So I think what that tells you is this sort of trend increase in arrears rates is probably likely to continue um, over the next six to 12 months. It's my turn. Who's the banker? Three and two. There you go. Thank you. you don't sleep a lot. You, you're constantly worrying that you're going to be one of those families that are living in their cars and everything is going to be taken away from them. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really confronting. You just... And trying to hide all that from the children and, and be strong around them, that's probably the hardest part. In Perth, Barbara Finlay is currently almost $2,000 behind on her mortgage repayments. She also owes almost $10,000 in council rates and bills. The interest is still piling on. I've got rates that I'm three years, nearly four years behind in. Um, water bills, everything. Um, phone bills, they're all out of control. And if, if I don't pay the rates, then I can also lose the house. Barbara and her then husband brought the house together in 2011. It was beautiful. I loved the way it looked. It was just time to settle down and stop moving all the time. So 
to, to purchase a house was like that stability. When the couple split up, Barbara's financial stress increased. I didn't want to move out because rental prices are higher than what my mortgage was. Um, and I've, I didn't want to really upset my children and unsettle them, so I stayed on and um, continued to pay all the bills on my own. Her daughter has autism, making it difficult for Barbara to find a job. She set up her own cleaning business, but it's only just breaking even, and she's drawing down on her superannuation to cover the debt. I've been living off food hampers from the churches and um, food bank for the last year and a half. The goal is to make it so that the business is actually earning me an income. So that will take away uh, some of that financial strain. I can actually put it towards my bills and then I hopefully I don't have to go bankrupt. <laughs> when your income comes in, that you take $150 a week cash out for food. With help from counsellors at charity Christians Against Poverty, Barbara is hopeful she can find a way out of mortgage arrears. Food bank vouchers as well so that you've got that. I'm positive. Like, I, have to, I have to stay positive because if I don't, you don't get anywhere in life. I need to show my children that you've got to keep pushing. It's the only way through. <laughs> Les Ladke is pushing ahead too, fixing up the house in the hopes of selling it for a price that will clear his debt. And he's getting help from financial counsellors at Catholic Care. What we're seeing is families are really struggling out there. The organisation says his situation isn't unique. We're seeing demand increase year on year significantly. It's very tragic that the, the Australian dream of owning your own home is out of reach for people. Never in a million years have thought that we would be in this situation. We're only living on the pension now, so we just have to manage our money and not ever again get into another debt. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.